Chairman out of 17 governorship candidates in Ondo State signed peace accord ahead of October 10 governorship election. We begin from Executive Legislature Affairs. The Senate has received a request from President Muhammadu Buhari to present the 2021 budget before a joint session of the National Assembly on the Thursday, the 8th of October 2020. President of the Senate, Ahmad Lawan, read the executive communication shortly after it reconvened for Tuesday's plenary. To formally present the 2021 appropriation bill to the joint session of the National Assembly. While I look forward to addressing the joint session, please accept Mr. Senate President the assurances of my highest regards. Yours sincerely, Muhammad Ubuhari. Governor Willie Obiano of Anambra State has described as not only unfounded but also unfair insinuations in some quarters that the Buhari administration is marginalizing and neglecting the southeastern part of the country in the execution of its mandate. The governor stated this while briefing journalists after an audience with President Muhammad Buhari. State House correspondent Adamu Sambo has the details. In Anambra, we love the president very much. Uh, the president has been doing well. He's building second Niger Bridge. You think it's very easy to be second Niger Bridge. And I just told you that uh, he was the fellow that did the Enugu on the Expressway when he was chairman of PTF. And now he's the president fixing the road. Uh, you know, then he built Zeke's mausoleum. You know Zeke's, uh, you, you can't talk about Nigeria without mentioning Zeke. Governor Willie Obiano was in the State House to brief President Muhammad Buhari on what he called beautiful developments in Anambra State, popularly referred to as the light of the nation. I did also appraise him on the progress so far made on the Second Niger Bridge. Uh, if you watch from the aside, you see that uh, almost half of that bridge has been done. You know, but because the water level is very high. Uh, the contractor working in that bridge uh, requires some equipment which they've already purchased uh, long ago uh, sitting in Germany and requires some support from Central Bank to be able to bring in those equipments. I did mention that to him and the, the president noted that and said he would do something about that. The governor made a case for presidential assent to the bill passed by the National Assembly for the establishment of the Federal University of Education, Aguleri, saying his administration has already paid compensation for the land where it will be cited towards giving Anambra North Senatorial District a sense of belonging. He also called for intervention by the federal government over the recent flooding that wreaked havoc in parts of the state. Four of my local governments, that is four out of 21, uh, uh, four of them are underwater now as we speak. It affected a lot of things, uh, property which includes uh, farm produce and what have you. So I called on Mr. President to assist us at this uh, very crucial time. He promised to do something immediately. Governor Obiano also discussed with the President issues relating to the ongoing work on Inugu Onisha Expressway as well as the deplorable state of other federal rules in the state that require government intervention. From the State House, Adamu Sambo, NTA News. Participants at the two-day joint executive and legislative leadership retreat in Abuja have recommended the creation of an effective conflict management and resolution mechanism in resolving areas of disagreement between the executive and the legislature and the overall interest of the nation. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo, who declared the retreat closed, emphasized the need for these arms of government to work together for the benefit of the country and the people. State House correspondent Jide Unifade reports. Key issues at the retreat include the principle of separation of powers as enshrined in the Nigerian constitution, which is said was designed for the arms of government to creatively and innovatively work together in a cooperative manner through meaningful and constructive engagements to bring about the national development. We mustn't waste too much time 
on processes and procedures. We must do all that is in our power to serve the needs of our people. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo stresses this, that there is only one government with all arms and the various capacities contributing positively towards the realization of shared goals and purpose of government. Poverty. We have huge deficits in infrastructure. Many children are out of school. If that is our context, we will be callous and irresponsible if we don't come together and work together to ensure that we sort out these grave problems that threaten our people every single day. The dogmatic emphasis on procedural niceties is a luxury we can't afford. In any event, there is no pure practice of the doctrine of separation of powers. There is no pure practice of it anywhere. The Vice President says the retreat is an indication of the determination to serve the people and not disappoint them. Ten recommendations were made, which include the call for an effective confidence-building measure in the governance process to ensure mutual respect and cordial relationship between the two parties. It's important for us to remind ourselves and assess where we are and to appreciate that what Nigerians want at all times is for us to think and act for them so that we address and take on the issues that can provide prosperity for our country. The idea is once you strengthen the relationship between the two uh, critical arms of government, that is the executive and the legislature, uh, everyone stands to gain, the country stands to gain, and th th this is what it's all about. You have to keep on talking. The executive and legislature must be seen to be doing the same thing at the same time and also resolving their differences in private and not wash their dirty linen in public. The fact that we have good relationship now does not mean we shouldn't sit down and fine-tune it. There is still, we can refine it. We can smoothen rough edges, which exactly was what we did. The retreat was gently organized by the presidency and the leadership of the National Assembly. From the State House Conference Center, Jide Onifade, NT News. Meanwhile, the passion to serve, says the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, is the motivation behind the cordial relationship between the Executive and the Ninth National Assembly. The Joint Leadership Retreat for the Executive and Legislative Arms therefore provided a platform to chart a seamless track. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali has been following events at the retreat, which ended Tuesday. The executive look at issues based on maybe the figures before them, but we look at issues based on the situations on ground. It is not like we are trying to encroach in their powers. No, we are not. All we are saying is we should be carried along. It's been two days of frank talk between the executive and legislature, coming just days to the presentation of the 2021 appropriation bill before the National Assembly. For participants at these joint retreats, it has helped align ideas of building Project Nigeria. The essence basically is just to consolidate and not take the relationship for granted. There is a commitment on both sides, especially from the leadership. The president from the, from the inception had shown his resolve and commitment to collaborate and cooperate with the National Assembly. When the bill or the policy gets to the National Assembly, it can go smoothly. Even the issue of budget that takes forever. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed says both appointed and elected officials share common commitments of providing value service to Nigerians. Between yesterday and today, we've seen that actually what binds legislative and the executive together is much more than what actually divides them. And that all that is needed is actually more understanding, more tolerance, and better collab you know, collaboration and cooperation. Governance is about partnership. Governance is about dialogue. And no one single arm of government can claim to have complete ownership of the government process. We can only succeed when we put hands together and call ourselves responsible to our actions. For whatever is the new normal, as the issues causing friction in the executive-legislative relationship have been smoothened.
It is very important that this is happening at a critical time when the PIB has just been presented before the National Assembly. At the end of the day, we all agree that we must work together. So we don't have divergent opinions as regards to the development of the country. So the aim of governance is to make sure that we give the people of Nigeria, as being enshrined in the constitution, we give them the desired development they need. The technical committee set up composed of representatives from both ends of the table, as directed by the president, will expectedly work to achieve a smooth executive legislative ride in the running of governments. Lami Ali, NTA News. And towards maintaining regional peace and stability, Speaker of ECOWAS Parliament, C.D. Mohamed Tunis, has led a parliamentary delegation to Conakry, the Republic of Guinea, for the first ordinary session of the country's National Assembly. Speaker Tunis addressed the opening session and held talks with some stakeholders preparatory to the country's presidential election, which will hold on the 18th October 2020. The ECOWAS parliamentary delegation will hold talks with stakeholders on the conduct of a peaceful election following rising fears of political unrest. Other issues to be addressed include poverty, unemployment, and impact of the coronavirus pandemic on youths and the vulnerable population of the Guinean society. In the same vein, Nigeria's role in stabilizing the G Gambia is not limited to entrenchment of democracy. Rather, it involves building human resources for security, economy, and social development. And so for all these, the Gambia says it is holding Nigeria tight. Usman Aliyu reports. In this hall, four ministers from the Gambia and Nigeria. This means the meeting here is more than just a passing interest on diplomacy. The Gambia believes so much in Nigeria for her role in West Africa and the good image of Africa which Nigeria portrays to the world. If Nigeria was to withdraw from the judiciary, our judiciary would be completely crippled. And thanks to the support of Nigeria, we've been able to build today our judiciary with homegrown lawyers and magistrates, but that could have not been possible without the support of Nigeria. Um, we're delighted to see that um, the democratic principles, the will of the people, um, is now uh, fully uh, restored uh, in, in, in the Gambia. Mark of honor, the Gambia has decided to offer a posthumous award to a Nigerian military officer for achieving successes in his dual responsibilities to the Gambia and Nigeria before his death. General Dada was the first officer, a highly professional Nigerian officer who came with a Nigerian training, an assistant group called NATA. This meeting, the minister says, another turning point in strengthening bilateral relations between the two countries. In Abuja, Usman Aliu, NTA News. And away from regional politics, serious attention is being channeled towards the National Water Resources Bill 2020. As the Nigerian Society of Engineers, NSE, says it is taking a professional look at the bill and enlightening Nigerians on the gains of the bill when passed into law. The NSC president, Babagana Mohamed, said this after a meeting with the Minister of Water Resources, Suleiman Adamu, at the ministry's headquarters in Abuja. Ulusheye Adeabo tells us more. Babagana Mohamed is the 32nd president of Nigeria Society of Engineers, NLC, an umbrella organization for engineering profession in Nigeria. He believes the NLC is in the best position to give a detailed account of Nigeria's infrastructure. He says it is time for Nigerians to ignore all bias to the National Water Resources Bill 2020, whether political, tribal or religious, and pay attention to the facts as explained by professionals. We have not seen anything. All these people are saying people's lands are going to be claimed, people's houses are going to be taken, people are going to pay money. I have not seen where all these things are. The bills are clear. They are on the table. <laughs> Though this meeting is for familiarization, discussions also focused on the controversy surrounding the National Water Resources Bill 2020. 
Minister of Water Resources Suleiman Adamu blames the current orders hindering the process of the bill on lack of proper education on its imports and prospects for the country. One of the components of it was the need to create a wash fund. With a wash fund, there can be a way to support the state in addition to all the things that we're doing. So if you're advocating as you throw away this bill, throw away this bill, you are throwing away an opportunity and depriving Nigerians of an opportunity for better financing of the water sector to improve the water supply and sanitation situation. Suleiman Adamu further explained that the protection of Nigeria's water resources as well as its development, conservation, management and control will aid in achieving the Sustainable Development Goals SDGs among all the benefits. In Abuja, Ulushaye Adiagbo, NTA News. You're watching the news on NTA International. We'll take a break now and return with more reports. From dusk to dawn, 24 hours a day, NTA International is with you in your living room, office, everywhere and anywhere. We provide the company you desire in terms of balanced and up-to-date news, programs and the best of entertainment. Tune in to the STV Channel 251, Go TV Channel 91, Freeview UK Channel 264, or you can download www.visiontv.co.uk. App for iOS or Android, Intelsat, 901 Degree East. You can also see us on Facebook and YouTube for quality content on the go. NTA International, Africa's window to the world. Thank you for staying with us. And for latest political developments in Nigeria, 10 governorship candidates out of 17 contesting in the October 10th election in Ondo State have signed the peace accord for a violence-free governorship poll. The agreement is expected to guarantee a peaceful atmosphere before, during and after the exercise. Olubukola Aduo reports. Although 17 political parties are participating in the governorship election slated for October 10, only 10 of them were present to sign the peace accord. The chairman of the National Committee on Peace, Abdul Salami Abubakar, who joined the session via Zoom, said the peace accord is intended to enable the electorate to feel secured while coming out to vote in an atmosphere devoid of chaos and fear. The should know that the and violence this time with and nothing could be achieved without peace. Chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, urged political parties, their candidates and supporters to promote and support all efforts geared towards a peaceful and transparent election. Without peace, our deployment plans, no innovations in results management, the safety of personnel, security of materials, and above all, the credibility of the elections will be severely undermined. The three major candidates promise to abide by all the rules guiding the election and accept the outcome of the poll. As the of this thing, that we also see as well as people on the need for them to keep away from violence. Nobody addition towards anybody in the world. I am absolutely Goodwill messages by some stakeholders centered on the need to raise the bar in terms of delivering credible election in all the states. In Akure, Olubukola, Aduwo, NTA News. There is no level of political alliance that can stop the victory of the All Progressives Congress in Saturday's governorship election in Ondo State. Director General, Voice of Nigeria, and member National Committee on Ondo Election, Osita Okechuku, said this in Abuja. Adebola Brooks on Sunday was there. <laughs> Rotimi Akere Dulu of the APC is one of the candidates participating in the Ondo State governorship election. Continuity, continuity of the good works going on. Osita Okechuku said, within the limited resources of the state, Governor Akere Dulu has performed excellently, and re-electing him is the best option for the state, 
to continue to enjoy even more dividends of democracy. There should be more concern that those infrastructure developments is what will provide employment, is what will provide more food on the table, and they stand to gain because Mr. President, President Muhammad Buhari has an enormous plan to develop the bitumen, the hood deposit bitumen in, in the axis where Ondo is. Osita Aokechuku also urged the people of Ondo state to come out en masse to participate in the election. There will be peaceful voting day on 10th of October. Let nobody drum you to not to come that there will be violence. There won't be any violence. 17 political parties are participating in the election which will hold in 18 local government areas of the state on Saturday, October 10. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday. NTA News. Meanwhile, the All Progressives Congress, APC, is continuing with its reconciliation process of aggrieved members across the country. The latest is the inauguration of the Bayelsa Reconciliatory Committee, headed by the governor of Gombe State, Governor Inua Yahaya, ahead of Bayelsa Central and West by election. Austin Anyebe reports. The Chairman Ketko Extraordinary National Convention Planning Committee, APC, Malabuni, represented by the Secretary, said a lot has been achieved in the past three months as many agreed members have been brought to the fold through reconciliations. He tasked the Baisa Reconciliatory Committee, chaired by the Governor of Gombe State, Inua Ihaya, to see to the victory of APC in the forthcoming Baisa by elections. Let me say with all sense of appreciation and fulfillment that the committee had in the last three months reconciled life threatening challenges for the party in 11 states across the country. Chairman of the committee tax APC members across the country to close ranks and say through the turbulent period of the party, expressing optimism that with strategies being mapped out by the national committee, the party will work stronger. He pledged the committee's commitment to be fair and just to aggrieved members during the assignment. At this moment, that we have galvanized our forces that we have reunited and that we have reconciled we are just going to polish you know the arrangements that our people have down the ladder so that we will work together and assiduously assure the success of the party the inauguration was attended by some members of the national working committee in abuja austin and yebe nt news and moving on to road infrastructure development governor yahaya bello has urged site engineers handling federal roads in Kugi State, particularly the 1.7 kilometer Murtala Mohammed Bridge, Jamata, Lokugama area of Lokoja to hasten repair works. Correspondent Francis Udojo reports that the governor was speaking during an assessment of ongoing repair works on the bridge. Hello, after several minutes searching for a cogent answer, Finally got one from one of the site engineers. Come, give me the talk, talk. Feel free. Because we want to help you, we want to help you. Sir, the contractor has gone long to start up the work. Now we for the mobilization because that, that one he borrowed has resulted. So we are waiting for mobilization. That's why you see so many devices. The second bridge we are using now is giving way. It's greatly affected now. At that joint over there, Little cars, small cars like this will find it difficult to pass. In no time, that one will give way and it will affect the whole bridge. If it, if it affects the whole bridge, it means movement from south to north and vice versa through local Kogi state is going to be impeded. Wondering what could be responsible for the delay in the mobilization? The governor promised to seek for answers and healthy actions that will hasten the completion of the project from Koton Karifi in Kogi local government area. Francis Dojo, NTA News. Let's check out some health reports. The United Nations Development Program, UNDP, has earmarked 457 million naira for disbursement to people deeply impacted by COVID-19 pandemic in Kano State. Resident representative of the UN agency, Mohamed Yahya, 
disclosed us during the official launch of the intervention at the Kano government house. Abdullahi Mustafa reports. COVID-19, which was declared a global pandemic by the World Health Organization in March this year, resulted in health and socio-economic challenges. Reducing the impact of the pandemic is the main objective of the United Nations Development Program's cash transfer project. In collaboration with the World Food Program, the project supports people in states deeply impacted by the pandemic. In Kano State, 9,600 households and 2,500 SMEs are to benefit from cash transfers and startups amounting to 457.6 million naira. As part of a 1.3 billion naira cash transfer program across Nigeria, it is my firm belief that the program will be implemented in a transparent and accountable manner for the benefit of those who are identified as beneficiaries of the project. I would also like to appeal for more institutional support for the state in the battle against the pandemic. Among contributors to the One UN COVID-19 Basket Fund are the EU, Japanese government, and other international donor agencies. In Kano, Abdullahi Mustafa, NTA News. You're watching the news on NTA International. More stories when we return. Don't go away.